This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Hecky Gamble. Yeah, let's go. Hey, Leon, you just told me that Norway is waiting for you. Yeah, I'm <laughs> off to vacations on Monday and I will be heading to Norway for two weeks and I'm super excited. <laughs> okay, so you are waiting for Norway too? <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's good. How's it going over here? Oh, it's pretty good. I got lots of work to do though. It's So we have lots and lots and lots to do. But elsewhere, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's the way it's supposed to be that, that we have jobs to do. The other yeah. thing is we need more people. And it's True. really hard these days to find devs, freelancers, modic guys, uh, <laughs> PHP guys, whatever. Yeah. So if anybody out there is listening or knows somebody, well, please do get in touch. We'd love to hear from you. Oh, uh, we truly do. Yeah. So... Okay, yeah, let's let's get going. We have a lot on the plate today, um, yeah. and I'd like to start with everything around email. Yeah, we have a huge topic of emails to cover today. First of all, the new email builder by Web Mechanic is live. I think the beta beta is live. Yeah, it's been it's been available for a while now, a couple of weeks. Oh, okay. um, it's pretty well hidden, so so I'll put it in the show notes, like like all the other things today. <laughs> like always, <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe we should also mention the show notes are always at uh, Mordic. No, it's it's, <laughs> uh, it's Mordicast dot com. If you want to go directly to a certain episode, you can always add a slash number of the episode. Yep. So in our case, it's either uh, Mordicast dot com if it's a current episode. Or go to modicast.com slash 15 and you are directly in this beauty. Uh, um, so, um, what you find there is a link to the beta version of the new email builder. That is uh, not part of the core as of today. It is uh, an effort by our friends at Web Mechanic. Mm -hmm. And um, it's pretty good looking already. It requires PHP 7.1 or more. Oh, so, yeah. if you have a Legacy installation uh, Mordic 2, uh, which is on PHP 7.0, you run into trouble. Yeah. But if you have a uh, Mordic 2 on a better PHP version, you can even use a, a email builder there, or of course with Mordic 3. So do do that. Play around with it. Give uh, feedback to the to Norman's team. And make it better and make it uh, get out of beta soon and available for everyone in a prepackaged form. So, yeah, that's that's good stuff. Um, it's uh, definitely a progress um, compared to the existing email builder. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. And uh, time and again, email is a huge topic with more marketing automation. Uh, just today I had a call from a, a potential client who wanted nothing but a replacement for his, his cloud-hosted uh, newsletter system. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we hear that uh, again and again. And they always say, okay, and once I have it, I, can, I will probably do more with automation in the future. But for now, I just care about the, the newsletter system. Yeah. Uh, seems to be tough. Yeah, and having a better email builder helps. And because of that... Yeah, talking about better email builders... There is a second new email builder. <laughs> it's called, one, I, I think, B, like the actual animal. <laughs> and uh, you will find it under the URL bfree.io. And it's also a new, I think, email builder. Or there is a new integration, I think. You can tell us a bit more about it. Exactly. So the, the B free project is not new. It's, it's a, a, just an independent email builder. There are multiple of those out there. Yep. Uh, the cool thing is that now a guy called Enger, I uh, don't know how to pronounce that handle. I also don't know who, <laughs> who is that person. What's his, his real name? I don't even know whether it's a guy or girl. <laughs> mysterious, mysterious. Yeah, I think he or she is based in France. But uh, nonetheless, um, um, that person came up with, with <laughs> a modic plugin for B3. And so uh, have a 
new button in the email uh, view which which uh, fires up this external email uh, builder Ooh. and does a nice job already. This one is in alpha. It's not even in beta, but but it's it's a working thing. It's not feature complete yet, but it does a lot of things, and it looks promising too. So we yeah. we all of a sudden have. Um, competition of email builders. <laughs> yeah, perfect. What a great <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. Um, yeah, that's email builders. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, I also got, like, not to email builders, but building email, especially building modic email themes. Our friend uh, Chris Calabro, who also releases the unofficial modic newsletter, Mm -hmm. so to speak be unofficial because I think it's like the main one and you should subscribe to it it's really really good he um, offers a course about um, building email themes with Mordic and he even proposed this as no coding experience required so I'm pretty excited how this, how this will look and yeah I hope I can take part oh well uh, frankly I have no idea what what it is going to be uh, and i think it's it's just a test balloon by chris yep. but uh, b because he's a really experienced guy and, and a good guy for uh, sure we give him thumbs up and uh, a little plug, plug for his his uh, training course here I, I i don't even know uh, when or what uh, is going to happen if you click the link but i'll put the link in the show notes yeah and to round up the topic of emails, we have a feature wish of the week, and it's the ability to archive emails, and probably even more, but just the ability to archive. So if you have like lots and lots of emails that you don't actually use anymore, but maybe want to go back in the future, the ability to like just click on it and archive it would be super, super handy. And I think we're missing that. And it would make handling of emails and maybe even campaigns or whatever you can archive uh, a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, good point. And it's not not a new point, by the way. It's, it's uh, brought up by by Stuart Head Hardwick in in July 18. So it's exactly <laughs> two years ago now that yeah. that uh, it was the first time that this came up mm -hmm. and. Uh, Whoever has been running his Mordic instance for a while and is, is active in, in email, especially if it was newsletters, oh, yeah. segment emails, yeah. oh, uh, over time you have 20 or 100 or multiple hundred of emails and that's just uh, making it pretty much unusable over time. True. Yeah. So we, we did discuss the idea of, of hiding everything that's unpublished. Mm hmm so um, have a switch that would only show you the published emails um, but having a, 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 you know, a separate property that says this one is archived this one is not archived so even if it's unpublished because you're currently preparing it yep. it is in a different view from from the from the old ones so that would really be the way to go and as you say the same applies um, to forums, to campaigns, etc. Maybe in that scale, but but once you introduce the notion of archiving, you might as well uh, apply that to other places as well. Yep. Yeah. Another good example of, of where a dedicated tiger team uh, would probably uh, be be good at doing a job really fast. This one has been hanging around. For it a long time. Nine, yeah. nine votes by now. If you go to the forum and vote it up, it, it may get even more pro even more priority. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, let's move on. Is that it for emails? Yes, I yeah. think so. But but it's not it for feature wishes because there's an uh, an existing thing called Tag Manager. And Ooh. there's uh, an existing agency called Leuchtfeuer. That's us. <laughs> I've heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they uh, were nice enough to promise to, to create an, a Tag Manager or, or at least to do a, a third-party plugin for Tag Management yep. uh, once that Modic 3 has been published. And uh, yeah, it has been published. Tag Manager 
Uh, we now started to do that as we promised. <laughs> but it's, it's not like we're done already. And then, as uh, Leon already, already said, uh, we have really <laughs> little spare time. True. Uh, it looks promising so far. So, so the concept should hold up. But uh, I don't really think it's going to be there in two weeks from now. But but um, it, is, it, it is on its way. So yeah, you hold, hold your breath. Quality takes its time. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay. So tag manager. Um, that's another thing that we uh, are giving to the public, and, and this one is. Uh, actually coming from from a customer project where uh, the customer needed some something and we said okay I, we'll give that uh, to you but we would also like to give it to everybody yeah and it's called the go to webinar plugin basically the go to plugin it was formerly known as the citrix plugin bundle i think and we uh, nearly completely revented it and it has now a lot of more functions compared to the old one it's easier to use it's handy and Eki do you want to tell us about a bit more about the uh, actual functions yeah sure let's let's start with the original Citrix plugin which is part of the core or it's, it, it, it comes with the core as of today and it's an important thing and, and an important functionality, but it has some issues, or it has a very limited functionality. Let, let's put yeah, it that way. Put it like that. Um, the way it was created um, does the following: it, it uh, allows you to create a form, uh, a modic form, uh, with the webinars that are available in your GoToWebinar account as of. Now, so at the point when you're creating the form, that's when Mordic is looking up the webinars available and lists them all in that form. So whatever you have in your webinar, go to webinar account will be available from a drop down in that form. Um, nice enough in many cases, but there are situations where um, that is not good enough. For instance, when you add another webinar, webinar in go to webinar that's not automatically showing up in mortic on the on the other end um, if you have multiple in go to webinar but only want to display one or a selection of uh, webinars in this specific specific form because maybe it's placed on a page that is just on a single topic um, there's no way to do that or there has been, been no <laughs> way so far and we're, we're changing that and we're changing more. So what you now do is you select from the available webinars so, um, in, in creating the form, you say, okay, it's this webinar and that webinar and um, please show those two in this form. Um, this also works with recurring webinars called sessions in, in GoToWebinar. So if you have one topic but multiple dates, you can even sh uh, show those. Um, nice. Moreover, you can get the metadata from GoToWebinar and use that as you like. Very important in, uh, example is if you have multiple webinars with the same name but separate uh, dates different dates yeah. uh, um, then you can say okay display that date within the drop down as well or display the language or display the the author the the the, the what the, the person who's giving the webinar <laughs> um, and even more you can use the metadata and display that uh, outside of the form, mm -hmm. like ahead of or on, on top of the form, you could, do, for instance, show a nice title and show the description as it is in GoToWebinar and style that all with CSS and so on. Super and nice. Yep. You can even update all that information in GoToWebinar and via Cron. It's going to be updated in your Mautic as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's now much more flexible, much more powerful. And at the same time, because we don't do any API requests when the user clicks around, uh, 
you will no longer run into the API trouble that we all knew if we, or that everybody knows whoever tried to use the Citrix <laughs> plugin. Yeah. yeah. And there's more, for, for example, uh, you can now use multiple organizers. So if you have multiple seats in your GoToWebinar account, um, you can see the, all, all the webinars from, from the different organizers in one place and select from those. So, yeah, it's, it's uh, pretty much everything you, you may have dreamt of <laughs> if, if you ever try to use it seriously. It does all the other things that, that it did before. So you have the feedback who attended the webinar yeah. and who did not. Um, you can start campaigns on that basis. Um, and all that is available for for download. The, the the plugin is done. It works nicely with a knowledge base article, and you have all that in the show notes, like you always have. <laughs> As always. <laughs> yeah. Um, good. And with that, I think we were ready to move on and uh, talk to Simon Biles. Here you go. Yay! Welcome, Simon. Simon Biles. Hey, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Hey, thanks. I'm doing great. How about you? Awesome. Thanks. I'm glad to have you today. Um, it's really two things that you and I want to talk to uh, talk about today. And that's because you are using quite extensively to win and to retain your SaaS customers. And on the other hand, uh, you are actually using uh, Mautic for that SaaS product. So, so that's it's the core mm -hmm. of your product, as, as I understand it. The name of the product is Matu. Uh, is that the proper pronunciation? Yeah, exactly. So in German, we call it Matu. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, basically an abbreviation of uh, marketing automation. So that's where the name comes from. Oh, I see. So it's M W A T W O. Exactly. So yeah, typical yeah. modern SaaS naming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sounds cool. Uh, yeah. yeah, before we look into that, um, let's uh, start with you as a person. What's, what's your background and what's your role today, maybe? Yeah, cool. So, uh, as you said, my name is Simon. Um, I have my background in IT since uh, almost 20 years. Uh, so, I'm still young, but uh, working with computers uh, already quite a long time. And I would say that my IT DNA is really about data. And um, that's also how I came to marketing automation and Matu. Uh, because I spent like the last 10 years in data analytics, big data. I was working as a consultant on the road, did a lot of um, business analytics projects uh, where we brought together um, business data with machine data, with uh, tracking data from websites. So um, this topic is already chasing me since a long time and uh, I really started to get enthusiastic especially uh, when I joined my last company, which was a Silicon Valley startup. Uh, so we built a SaaS uh, all about data analytics or big data, which uh, where we tried to make access to data very easily for everybody in the organization. So imagine you have thousands of data sources. Um, all data sources have their own typicality, like formats or location or size. It's very difficult to get uh, access to them and, and use them for analytics, for example, in business analytics tools like Tableau. So we had that interface that makes this uh, very easy to work with. Um, so really data, working with data, data analytics, um, and that's, that's my driver um, in every day's business. Uh, so I spent the last four years uh, as a product manager in that SaaS company before I joined now Matu. Um, also uh, as a product manager or head of product where I'm driving forward the product strategy of our own SaaS. Um, and as you already mentioned, uh, our SaaS uh, has Motic in, in the core. Yeah. So that's basically myself and, uh, and, and the reason why I'm so enthusiastic to talk you, with you about Motic. Okay. Um, and we have to mention, uh, you're now back from the valley, back at home, which is in Switzerland for you, is that right? 
Exactly, yes. Um, so I, I never moved my home. Uh, so I was contracted or uh, I, I uh, was working for that Silicon Valley startup. Um, but the headquarter was in San Francisco, so I traveled a lot from Switzerland to there, but uh, I always lived in Switzerland even during that time. Okay, good timing on your side that you're now completely local. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, I think business travels will be really difficult to manage during uh, these pandemic times. Hey, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, um, let's talk about Matu a little bit more. You already gave a little bit of hints, but but what's, what's the idea what's the elevator pitch and uh how did that i mean were you there when the idea was born or or did you came on board later yeah so um about that i actually um joined matu when it already was made on the market for maybe a year uh but i knew the people already before that i worked together with them uh, f um even before the, my silicon valley startup so I knew the network, I knew the idea, um, and then I, I joined Matu uh, for in the beginning as a, let's say, a product owner driving the development um, efforts and uh, increased my engagement up to the point where I'm now part of, of the core team and uh, driving the strategy. Uh, so Matu itself, uh, in, in summary, I would say, Uh, we took Modic as an open source software, which is really great, and, and made a product out of it. So that's in, in very short. And product means a lot more than just software, right? It means uh, adding um, service level agreements so we can sell it to enterprise customers. It means um, operational aspects like backup and disaster recovery. It means also data protection uh, to uh, um, make sure that uh, law enforcement is fine or, or all the data regulation is fine. So host, hosting in Switzerland is a big aspect. And we added, uh, of course, product support. That means when people have uh, issues that so that they have um, access to product support in their mother language. Um, and and uh, obviously, we also do additional development work in terms of providing our own add-ons to extend the functionality of Modic, which in combination then is, is Matu. Um, on top of that, we add our professional services, uh, means we're doing campaigns and uh, consulting of marketing automation for our customers, of course, using Matu. Uh, so that's the full package of what our company provides. Mm -hmm. And you already mentioned the aspect of customer data platform. Is that also integral part of, of um, Mautic as you are, or of, of your service of, of Matu, or do you use additional um, pieces for that? Yeah, so um, I, I would say that's our North Star, uh, where we would drive Mautic or Matu towards to. Um, so that you can use Modic or Matu as your central um, point of source for customer data. And at this point, I'm already claiming that uh, it, it's uh, possible to do that, to use Modic as your traffic robot for all this customer data. And we are actively um, doing some or creating use cases Uh, with our customers where Modic is the central source for um, for customer data. And uh, the reason for that is Modic already provides very extensive features uh, for getting data in, like all these uh, contact forms, um, focus items, or even the APIs are, are very handy uh, to extend the full customer profile, which is an essential part of having a customer data platform. And so. The idea is to complete the, uh, a single unified customer profile with as much information as you can um, based on behavior like browsing or or um, or filling forms and so on and together with facts that you can get from an existing CRM or from other structured uh, sources. So yes, um, It's already in place, and uh, what we're aiming to do is um, to 
completed uh, with uh, something that I have in mind I'm a big advocate for which um, prevents you from copying data from one place to another oh, so that sounds yeah. maybe a little bit abstract but the idea is as soon as you copy data from an existing CRM or a data warehouse you, it's it's an act it's a second copy and you're you're losing the source of truth for this data point so for example if you copy uh, contact information from your existing CRM into Modic, mm -hmm. you, you already have to make sure that um, the data is synchronized so that when you change the CRM data, also Modic uh, gets an update of that. So that's quite an issue. First of all, because you have to spend efforts to make sure the data is already always up to date. And second, yeah, w which data copy is now the latest one yeah right? and also maybe it's even a, a security or privacy concern oh absolutely can, yeah. Yeah, can, yeah can you talk yeah. about what what industries you're in what or your clients rather yeah so uh, we are very broad so tourism um is is one area of customers where we do a lot because um the, uh, they actually do active re-engagement with um with put, with leads uh, so to track them across the different channels and uh, that's very interesting we have a lot of um, enterprise communication teams uh, from any type of company that work with us uh, because they are uh, have their communication strategies implemented with modic across different channels that's very typical um, yeah so and, and those, uh, those, sorry those are typically all located in in switzerland or are you all across europe or yeah, I would say German-speaking area, 59% um, Switzerland, and we have a few in Germany. As okay, well. cool. And uh, out of curiosity, it, with, with Matu having been around for a while, it's probably all built on Mordic 2. Uh, what, what's your roadmap for the switch to Mordic 3? <laughs> yeah, it's a great question. That, uh, uh -huh. I was already a little bit afraid of that. So. Um, no, we are very keen to uh, implement Modic 3 um, as, at some point. Um, the, the, um, the advantages are obvious, like increased stability, better maintainability and, and all that stuff. Um, we realized that um, we did quite a few changes to Modic Core, uh, so that means we do not have very great um, upwards compatibility to Modic 3, so that means uh, we, we have to take the effort to do the merges at some point. <laughs> um, but I would say in fall this is going to be a, um, a priority for us then. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just curious. I, I guess you're not alone in that way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, now, on the other hand, um, you also eat your own dog food, so to say. Um, mm -hmm. So, in other, so you are using automation uh, to acquire your customers, to nurture the leads, and um, also to work with your existing clients and, and uh, guarantee retention. So, um, exactly. so can can you give us? Uh, some some more interesting examples maybe of what you're doing and, and maybe what you're integrating with and all that mm -hmm. sure yeah so um we actually are using modic uh, in a few places it, it begins actually from the time when uh, lead enters the website and uh, we using focus items to grab their attention uh, to um you know, turn them into known contacts, uh, ideally with an email address. The incentive is a free trial version of Matu, so the, the product itself. So uh, at some point when somebody subscribes for the trial, we are using um, Modic for uh, multi-step onboarding churning uh, up to the point where the user can use the trial. And that includes a double opt-in, of course, it includes a multi-form or multi-step form which uh, checks availability of a subdom for a subdomain that the user can choose for his own Matu installation. It includes also password with a complexity check, mm -hmm. um, all backed with um, 
you know, with uh, sub, uh, with emails uh, to confirm that each step is is, is uh, was successful, and um, at the point where we have all the information that we need to set up the trial, it launches uh, automatically, uh, so-called provisioner um, with a manual. Uh, approval step which is a post to Slack so we can click a button to approve the request and then after 10 minutes uh, the user receives an email that his uh, Matu workspace is available and he can log in with the provided username or email address and, and password. So this is all a combination of um, modic components from focus items to forms to campaigns uh, including webhooks uh, to trigger our APIs um, that's the part until we have the user in his MAT2 trial workspace and um, we are also using MAT2 or MODIC to track users in, MAT in MODIC <laughs> so the tracker is um, included in, in the um, MODIC frontend or in the admin backend itself so we can see what <laughs> the user is actually doing in the backend mm -hmm. so that means uh, when he opens the support chat, uh, we, we see the history of um, you know what steps he took so we can provide better support context. And um, yeah, during that um, trial phase, uh, we are engaging with the customers with marketing content, uh, all about marketing automation. So he get, uh, gets an idea of what he can do with, uh, with the software or with the tool. And uh, there is a second track, which is the sales track, we call it. Uh, so to inform the user when he's happy, when to identify when he's actively using uh, the SaaS. Uh, we in re uh, engage with him differently as when he would be inactive. And then up to the point where the trial comes to an end, uh, we, we try to um, get an activation from him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you do yes. any any sort of surveys or thoughts like that in in, in the nurturing process? Um, that's actually for active customers. Um, so we do product surveys uh, to um, you know get the customer happiness. Um, so we can influence the product roadmap or our development efforts. Um, so we are using a combination for, of uh, modic and type form so we can send very customized or very personalized um, surveys uh, with their names on it and um, we are using a URL shortener to create unique links so we can send them even through uh, text message uh, providers or SMS providers which where um, you know the number of characters allowed is limited and so everybody gets a unique link and that's also an integration of modic with type form um and 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 backwards I like it i like it um now basically just like many others you are building an entire business on modic in multiple ways so the the, the product is modic the marketing is modic everything is modic lovely right. it, it's 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 nice and it's good in so many ways uh for modic as well uh, because the, the growing ecosystem makes Mordic more relevant then, regardless of what it is. It, it, it makes it more complete for the customers and it, it helps spreading the word, of course, and everything. Yeah. So, um, and also, very frankly, the, the commercial interest of many into Mordic um, is, um, or in, into Mordic getting better all the time and more successful all the time, that's an important part of any so open source project it's a real driver for contribution and support of all sorts mm -hmm. so so that's a perfect situation and we like the fact that that more and more business like business like yours um come up and, and after all my own agency is also b building part of its business on modic and, and betting mm -hmm. on modic to succeed um i know that your developers are actively contributing on github already but right. um, wearing my Mordic community team lead hat, I just have to ask, what would it take for your team to become more active in the community at large? So, what, what, Or what are the inhibitors or the missing triggers or, or what would it take uh, for your team to, to be more visible, more mm -hmm. active? 
So um, I just got reminded that um, the, the easiest answer to this is uh, give us more time. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. No, What's um, the next best? Uh, <laughs> uh, so in terms of uh, new features, um, I think it would be really useful to align roadmaps, um, you know, from our businesses with uh, the Mautic ones. Um, I think what's really preventing us from contributing to new feature is the fear of somebody else is all already doing the same thing. <laughs> so, um, and, and we do have business needs and, and we, will, we are working on them, but sometimes it would be helpful to see, ah, oh, um, something like the tag manager is already on the roadmap, so we don't have to spend efforts on that at this point, but we can focus on something else that could be interesting for the community as well. So we can align concepts or, or um, specifications, work on that in our own way, and then uh, later on see what we can contribute back. So. Um, I think that from our perspective would be most useful uh, with regard to bug fixes. Uh, it's just a matter of um, taking it serious enough. So what we used to do is um, thinking, ah, oh, yes, this could be very useful for contributing back and then we just forgot about it. So th oh. that's on us. <laughs> uh, so definitely we also uh, can improve our uh, logistics in terms of managing contributions, but uh, uh, that's for, for the smaller items and um, for new things, as I said before. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's a uh, two-way... Um thing that, that once you get more engaged with the community it's it's a more automatic thing to to contribute let's say bug fixes back to, to github into github which is really not a big effort it's it's just this little little point that you need to overcome and once you're in the, in the mm -hmm. habit and once you know more people etc it becomes much easier and more more natural With regards to the roadmap remark, that I found that really interesting because it ties into um, the, the discussion that we're, we're currently having uh, about uh, the, the larger roadmap, which which is describing the big milestones and or the, the uh, big overhauls, uh, as opposed to all the the tiny little features. Um, which cannot be part of, of a big roadmap and, and a general team, but, but, but it's much, much more uh, successful to divide that up into all the functional areas of, of Mautic. And um, um, we, we, we had a little bit of teaser about that concept in the past, and uh, I hope we're ready to announce uh, the, the first actual implementation of that concept very soon, and that will make it Real easy to find the right people uh, regarding a specific feature and, and find out about the plans and, and uh, discuss your plans and, and contribute in a really low effort way. So yeah, um, thanks for, yeah, for sharing that. Also, thanks thanks for sharing all the the background in in general. Uh, we did talk about Matu, and I only briefly mentioned the URL. That's Matu M A M A A T O O dot I O. I'll put that in, in the show notes, like always. Um, and how can people reach you best? Yeah, just uh, hook up with me on LinkedIn. So my name is Simon Balls, uh, as you said. Um, or shoot me an email over simon at matu.io. Yeah. Uh, happy to get some feedback or um, answer any questions about uh, the use cases we mentioned here. Yeah, looking forward to engage with everybody. Yeah, and I'll put those uh, links in the show notes too. And um, yeah, thanks for your time. I'm looking forward to uh, what would we see from Matu in the future. And I'm very much looking forward to talk to you again very soon. Thanks, yeah, Simon. Thank Take you. Care. Thank bye -bye. you and have a good day. Thank you, Ben. Bye-bye. Yeah, thanks, Simon, for the interview. And it's quite interesting that once again, there are people who are willing to contribute, but are unsure how to start, where to start. And yeah, it's just like lacking that we have, um, oh, well, we have people who want to contribute, but they don't know how to start. There's like missing a starting point. No, or not even actively want to contribute, by, but would be okay with contribution, but, but are not really 
triggered by anything yeah. or motivated or given the opportunity to do that. Yeah, uh, so we, we're, we're really leaving potential on the street and we, we need to take care of that. We need to, yeah, we need to work on that. Yeah, yeah, well, um, yeah, speaking of community, um, Ruth did another good job in, in writing up all the news uh, in a community roundup for the second quarter. A lot of material, a lot of data, and a lot of uh, good good facts also. Yeah. So I think the, the uh, results are really positive and it, it uh, matches what we also feel about the development of the community. So do have a look. It's a pro comprehensive thing. Um, Look at the link uh, and read for yourself. It's uh, pretty oh. pretty impressive. Yeah. And then there's another thing that happened lately, just a couple of days ago, that Acquia announced that they now have a digital experience platform. Wow. The XP. <laughs> yeah. And uh, basically, they renamed what they had so far. They also renamed... Mautic mm. within the, mm -hmm. the XP they they now call it campaign studio you won't find the word Mautic in that product anymore Ooh. Um, it still is the same thing of course and um, on the other hand I am really curious about what it means what a strategy is for the future and and what um, what what the details are behind the scenes? Oh yeah, uh, um, the XP is more than than Mordic, of course. It is what has been called Maestro so far. It is their uh, CDP, their customer data yeah. platform that they purchased, and so on. Um, so the integration of that is going to be a big deal. I think it's all centered on the CDP. Uh, they certainly do things on top of Mordic, and I'd like to, to learn about that. Just out of curiosity, the, the one important thing for us is that the commitment still stands, uh, that the core product that they use is the same that we have in, in open source Mordic. Mm -hmm. They do not uh, fork and move away from, from the Mordic core. We, we heard that commitment again and again i hope it still stands i'm pretty sure it does um, and on the meta level um the fact that they dropped the brand modic now entirely after letting go of the social media channels etc previously um is what we kind of expected we still don't have a statement that it is now 100 percent the open source project if, if we say Mordic but that's of course where we want to get to get rid of all the confusion uh, if somebody says Mordic that is the open source product and the open source project has nothing to do uh, or is, is not referring to a commercial company to commercial product or part of product seed uh, yeah so so <laughs> Nice information, a lot of questions uh, that pop to to my mind. And um, so what I'd tr like to do is get someone with Mordic to talk about exactly those questions. Um, one of these days, I'll, I'll do an interview with, with Dries, with, with the head of Mordic and the inventor of Drupal. Yep. Uh, but that would be on a different level, I think. I'd, I'd ha rather talk to some some product or tec technical person in, in Acquia about the backgrounds of the XP, but also about the future directions of Mordic and maybe even of, of the brand. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe next uh, episode, maybe the one after, but, but one of these days, one of these <laughs> episodes, we, we'll hopefully have good answers for, from our friends at Acquia. Yeah, and that's... Uh, Pretty good sequel to um, to say bye bye. To say <laughs> see you soon, or uh, or uh, yeah. I hope you listen in at, at our next episode. I hope you like this one. Um, again, f do find the show notes. Uh, there was a bunch this time. Do find them at uh, mortycast dot com. Um, like always, give us all the feedback that you have, all the inspiration, all the questions that you have. Uh, because we we need to know what you would like to hear. So get in touch with all the usual channels. Yep. Um, and other than that, 
take care, stay safe, uh, and um, yeah, talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.